Hi guys, this lesson is on section 5.2, which is relations and functions. Okay, first the definitions. Relation is just a set of ordered pairs. So you can see just a pair of coordinates. They're relating to each other somehow. Function. It's if each input has exactly one output, it's a function. I can tell you now this will be on the quiz and it will be on the test. And I will expect it word for word in the green words. You don't need the uh, purple. I put those in so you know. But each input, otherwise known as a domain, has exactly one output. So you will see that on the quiz and you will see that on the test. That's why I have a star here. Input is also known as the domain or the x coordinate. And the output is also known as the range or the y coordinate. And so if you see it in an x, y table like you have here, you have the x, y table. You can see domain, range, input, output. And if you forget the domain and range, you can remember domain has the in with the in. And you look out on the range if you want to remember it that way. So just remember a doma in is your input. Okay? Um, determining if something is a function. So I have a few different examples here for you, as well as a homework check. OK, so the first way to tell is by using a mapping diagram. Again, definition of function is each input has exactly one output. So if you look at this input output table, if you want to draw arrows, that's fine, from the input to the output. If each input has only one arrow going out of it, then it is a function, okay? So it is a function. So this one would be yes, okay? If you look at this one, it might seem a little tricky, <clears throat> but if you put arrows again, each input or each x does have one y. It can be the same y. So as long as each one has only one arrow coming out of it, this one is also yes, okay? Coming up here, I'll come to this one after. The input, if you look at here, one is going out, but two has two arrows coming out of it. So this answer would be, no, it is not a function. And it's because two has two different outputs. Okay, So you can see if it, if, if it comes out of the same number twice to two different numbers, it is not a function. Okay, So coming back to this one here, this is your homework check. Is this a function? Okay, so I just said I use this example and all that. I'm going to give you the answer right now. I'm not going to write it down. Please do not tell anybody about it. They can listen for it. The answer is going to be F. Okay, the answer is going to be F, which is going to be I, as in yes in Hawaiian. Okay, do not be fooled by the yes or the true. The answer is going to be F, which is I in Hawaiian. Okay. Uh, if you answer false or no, if anybody answers false or no, I know they obviously did not watch this because I'm giving the answer. The reason why is I switched the range and domain around. In these two, you can see I put the input on the left and the y and output on the right. But in this one, you can see that I put the range or the output on the left and the domain on the right, so I flip-flop them. So actually, this one is exactly like the one above it, where each domain, 4, 5, and 6, has the same range which is 7. So the answer is yes. Again, this is a function, but the answer is going to be F as in Frank, or F as in fail. If you fail to watch this, you will get it wrong. Okay, the other way they might give it is in coordinate pairs like this. The way you would tell this is look for the, if this is x, 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 and the other ones are the y's, the second one are your y coordinates. What you want to do is look at your x's. Does each x have exactly one y? And the answer is yes. So this is a function. Okay. On this one, if you look here, this one has a 1, a 3, and a 1. You can see this one has two different outputs. So the answer would be no, it is not a function. Okay. Because 1 has two different outputs. Okay. If you look at this, even though they have the same output, look, all you want to do is look at the x's. Your shortcut is looking at the x's. If all of your x's, your x-coordinates, are different, such as 1, 2, and 3, or 1, 3, and 5, your answer is going to be automatically yes. But if you have two of the same x's like this with two different y's, 
Your answer is going to be no. Okay? Um, the other way to tell is called a vertical line test. And I see the glare, so I'm going to turn switch lights. For a vertical line test, what you want to do is take a pencil or a ruler or something. I'm going to use purple pens. Okay, these are purple. So again, if I'm going to check, if somebody watched the video, I'm going to ask what color pens did I use for the vertical line test. You can see they're purple. What you do, make it vertical. And if the dots, if two dots ever hit the pens, it is not a function. So over here, I have one dot, one dot, one dot, one dot, one dot. So this is a function because I never did have two dots hitting it at the same time. Okay. Whereas if you watch this one, when I come here, one dot, one dot, but over here I have two dots hitting it. Okay. And then one dot, one dot, one dot. These two dots means that it is not a function. Okay, because it does not pass the vertical line test. So the vertical line test is just take a pen, go across. If it ever has two dots hitting it at the same time, it is not a function. And if think, you think about it, the x coordinates are going to be the same, but it's going to have two different y coordinates when you graph it. And that's the same as something like, um, something like this, where the x coordinates are the same, but two different y's. Okay, so that's how you determine if it's a function. Check if each input has exactly one output. They might give it in three different ways. Mapping diagram, so again you can see a mapping diagram, coordinates, or you can use the vertical line test if they give you a graph. Okay? Function notation. Okay. What you need to know for function, function notation. If they give you an equation such as y equals 4x plus 6, you can rewrite it as f of x is equal to 4x plus 6. So the way you say this is f of x is equal to 4x plus 6. Okay, That's the same thing. y and f of x are interchangeable. It's still your output and it's still your range. Okay, So just another way of saying the output is f of x function form. So in this table, you can write it as y equals f of x, uh, sorry, y equals 4x plus 6. You can do an xy table. If I stick a negative 1 in there, I would get 2. Oops, I use a red pen, sorry. I would get negative 4 plus 6, which is 2. If I put a 0 in here, I get 0 plus 6, which is 6. If I put a 1, it's 4 times 1, which is 4, plus 6, which is 10. And if I put a 2, I would get a 14. That's how you do the xy table. If you did it function form, it would look like this. f of x is equal to 4x plus 6. If you notice, the x's are the same. Okay, they're going to be the same. So how you would do it is you go f of negative 1. So if my x is negative 1, I would put it where these two x's are. f of negative 1 is equal to 4 times negative 1 plus 6. And again, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4 plus 6, which is 2. When you do the 0, as you did here, you just put it into these two parts. f of 0 is now 4 times 0, which is 0, plus 6, which is going to be 6. When your input is 1, you say f of 1 is equal to 4 times 1 plus 6, which is going to be 10. And then when your x or your input or your domain is 2, you say f of 2 is equal to 8 plus 6, which is going to be 14. Okay. So again, the way you say it is f of x. This would be f of negative 1, f of 0, f of 1, f of 2. Okay, a common mistake people try to do, if they say f of 2 is equal to 14, okay, that is not saying f times 2. So do not try to divide by 2 and say f is equal to 7. Okay. Do not try to do that. That is wrong. Okay. Do not do that. You leave it as f of 2 is equal to 14. Okay. So here's other ways of solving functions. I'm, I'm trying to get through this fast, so it's going to be a short video, hopefully. There's two, two ways to do this. There's going to be making a table, and then there's going to be finding the range. When you make a table, if my function is, function is same as the equation, by the way, okay? Function equation. My function is f of n is equal to negative 2n squared plus 7. Notice, this is not x's. They can be any letter, okay? It could be f of a, such as over here. Notice, it's f of a. Okay, they can be any letter. That's still your input, okay? 
If your domain or your input is going to be negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. If they want you to make a table, it'll say make a table. This is what it's going to look like. Then it'll say find the range. You'll see it. It's going to be very similar between these. If it says make a table, I will allow you, if you choose, to do it, just do it this way instead of making the table. Okay, if you choose that way, you can do it that way, even though it says make a table. If you want to make a table, go ahead and make the table. Okay? So the way you do it, for domain of negative 1, you put a negative 1 for your n. You put it in for this n as well. When you solve it, you do the square first in PEMDAS. So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 7 is going to be 5. And that would be your answer. Now, if you wanted to write it, you would go f of negative 1 is equal to 5. And if you wanted to put the coordinate form, it's negative 1, comma 5. These you do not need to do. Okay, again, you do not need to do. I'm just trying to show it to you so you can get used to the seeing it. Your answer would just be 5. That would be your answer. Okay, I'm just showing you. If it was f of negative 1 is equal to 5, that's like saying this is, this is your x, this is your y. Over here, when you do a 0 for this 0, you put it in, you get 0, negative 2 times 0 plus 7 is going to be 7. So again, this is your answer, but f of 0 would be 7, or if you put it in coordinate form, it would be 0, comma 7. Okay. On this one here, you put a 1 in here, you would get a 1 squared becomes 1. Negative 2 plus 7 is going to be 5. So f of 1 is going to equal to 5 and 5. And you can see, yes, it did come out to the same answer, and that's because we're dealing with a square up here. Okay. When I put in a 2 here, I would get a 4. Negative 2 times 4 is 8. Negative 8, I'm sorry. Plus 7 is going to be negative 1. So my answer is negative 1. If you wanted to put it in this way, you could put it like that. Okay. So that's how you make a table. It's just substituting these domains in for both the n here and here. Okay. So this one would go here. And it would go here. Okay. Finding the range is the same way. So if I have f of a is equal to negative 3a plus 5, my domain is negative 2, 0, and 5. The way you would write it is, instead of writing it like this, you would write it f of negative 2. So again, this is your input. So this would go here, and it would go here. When I multiply this, I would get 6 plus 5. And when I get my answer, I would get 11. So f of 2 is equal to 11. Okay. When I put the 0 in, I put f of 0 is equal to negative 3 times 0, which is 0, plus 5, and 0 plus 5 is 5. Again, this is my answer. Don't try to divide by negative 2. That's your answer. f of 2 is equal to 11. f of 0 is equal to 5. Don't try to divide by 0 here. When I do the 5, I put the 5 into this and this, and I would get negative 3 times 5 is negative 15 plus 5, which is equal to negative 10. So f of negative 5, I'm sorry, f of 5 is equal to negative 10. Okay? So that's how you do those. Pretty simple. Just again, sticking in the input, getting your output. Okay? So here's my homework check number two. I want you to, I'm sorry, moving it around. Find f of 3. I want you to find f of 3. So if f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 4, I want you to find f of 3. Okay. Please put the original problem. Please show the work. And it should look similar to, I'll back up so you can see it. should look similar to one of these. Okay. I want to see it like this. I should see a couple steps. Okay. Uh, please input that answer in. Uh, and I hope this helps. Take care. And this, this is 14 minutes, just so you know.